Back in the kitchen, Chef Mary here with the Way Cool Cooking School. Um, what I'm about to show you is how to make our cinnamon apple pan pies. Oh, I love pie. And a lot of the reason people love pie so much is because of the buttery, delicious, flaky crust. And so in this fall baking kit, we not only um, showed you how to make the hand pies and give you everything to do that, we're actually gonna show you how to make crust from scratch. Um, this is probably one of the simplest apple pie crust that I have ever, ever made. And I wanna share that with you today. And so um, for this recipe, we've got our flour and salt already in a bowl, ready to make our crust. I've already pre-measured out my shortening and this cool little measuring cup that's just gonna pop it right out for when I need it. Um, in the fall baking kit, you'll, you actually ended up with double the shortening that you need. So if you wanted to and have these other ingredients, you could actually make more pie dough at home, but you don't need all of that. I've also got some butter that I'm browning currently, and it is like nice and toasty and brown right now on the stove. And so I'm gonna just turn that down a little bit. I've got our apples pre-cut ready to cook up. And then I've got some sugar, some brown sugar, some salt, and some cinnamon. And that's gonna help me cook up these apples so that we can use them for the filling in our pie. And that's the thing I'm gonna do first. I'm actually gonna make the filling so that it has time to cool while we're making the pie crust so that we can incorporate it into our pie and our hand pies. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and I brown that butter in the pan. I did not burn the butter. And it's real quick what happens with brown butter and burn butter. One minute it's toasty and it smells so nutty and good. And then if it turns black at all, you wanna clean out that pan and start all over again. But we caught ours just in time, and so we've got all those nutty flavors. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add two apples that we have diced up into a small dice. And so these pieces are probably a half of an inch by a half of an inch here. I like to leave the peel on because I like the peel on these tart, tart apples. If you do not, you of course can peel them and core them and cut them that way. So we're gonna add that into our filling. I got a nice sizzle there. Very, very good. The pan is still nice and hot. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take and I'm gonna toss these around the pan a little bit, get them covered into that brown butter, just like that. And I'm gonna add in to our pan the different sugars. So the brown sugar, what makes brown sugar brown is actually molasses. And that instantly tells me as I'm cooking that this is gonna be a gooey apple filling because the molasses is gonna add to that kind of gooey apple deliciousness. And then I'm gonna add some regular sugar in there, a pinch of salt to balance out the sweet on our palate, and then our cinnamon, and I'm gonna to toss that right on top of there. And then I'm gonna take and I'm gonna to toss those in there too. And I'm gonna use my trusty wooden spoon here and just gently start to push that around the pan. Now that butter and everything is hot, so if you are cooking, uh, make sure that you have a grown-up handy, so you have a, a grown-up friend to help you at the stove. And we're just gonna allow all of these flavors to kind of cook down so that our apples are covered in that delicious, delicious cinnamon and sugar mixture here. And so while those are cooking, we're gonna go ahead and we are gonna make our dough. So I'm gonna keep that heat kind of a medium, medium low. I'm using a gas burner today. So if your burner needs to be adjusted for the heat, you wanna make sure it's not boiling and burning because we are, but we do wanna kind of cook it down with our apples. And so next is our dough. So, all right, so Lynn is gonna take over on the stove. And so she's, she's gonna watch our apples for us while we make our dough here today. And I've got in my bowl, as I mentioned, the salt and flour. So what I'm gonna take here is I'm just gonna take and I'm going to use a trusty fork, just a fork from the fork drawer. And I'm going to mix that salt and sugar up together. Now, some cool tools in the kitchen, if you are baking and baking a lot, or you have this tool in your kitchen and you're not quite sure what it's used for, this is what they call a pastry blender or a pastry cutter. And what it's meant to do is actually cut the butter or fat or shortening, in our case, into this dough. Um, mine at home doubles sometimes as a avocado smasher for guacamole or a potato smasher for smashed potatoes, smashed potatoes. So it has multiple purposes, but really it's used to kind of cut that in. Great when you're making biscuits, scones, pie doughs, that would be the primary use of this tool here. And what it really does is it means that I'm not using my fingers so that whatever fat I'm using, be it butter or shortening, stays cool to the touch and doesn't melt. Um, I have really, really warm hands. And so when I make pie doughs and things like that, I actually have to usually run my hands under cold water so that I don't melt the butter. But this mixture here now, this easy pie dough, 
is really only three ingredients. It's flour, it's salt, it's shortening, and then it's ice cold water to have the whole thing come together. And so I'm gonna use the fork here today for a couple different things. One, I don't wanna blob this whole thing in here. And so I'm gonna take my fork and I'm just gonna start to kind of fling little bits, maybe pea-sized pieces of this shortening into this mixture here. It'd probably be a good idea if they put that in the refrigerator and chilled it a little bit. Oh yeah, you could definitely chill the shortening mm -hmm. in the refrigerator so it would be a little bit easier. And as I'm adding it in, I'm gonna start kind of just tossing and covering the shortening into the flour mixture as well. Now there's a lot of different pie dough recipes. I think at one point probably every grandma or auntie in America had their own pie dough recipe. It isn't quite that way anymore, but I know that people that do make pies regularly take their crust very, very seriously. And this is just one of maybe thousands of way to make pie dough. And so if you and your family have a favorite pie dough recipe, you can certainly use your favorite pie dough recipe to make these apple pie hand pies as well. So as I'm getting all of the shortening in here, and you really have to be kind of patient, and I know you wanna just kind of blob it all in, but we really have to go in little pieces because what we wanna do is we wanna create little layers of shortening in between the flour so that when these bake up in the oven, they become flaky pie dough. So I'm gonna take, and I'm just adding the little pieces in here, just kind of flicking them off of my fork into the mixture, just like that. Getting all in there. Now, this measuring cup is cool because I can take, when I get to the end, and kind of push up all that extra shortening that I still want to incorporate in there up to the top. And then we're just going to keep adding that in there and tossing it with my fingers. This is a messy job. <laughs> Baking is hands on. And so um, this is a great job to get little fingers because really the littler your fingers are, the easier it is to kind of incorporate little pieces of fat into your pie dough too. And so we got this. All right, messy, but it's all in there. So I'm gonna take and move that out of the way. And then I'm gonna take, and I'm just gonna gently take my fingers and toss it in there. And as I'm doing this, I'm kind of twinkling my fingers to break up those little pieces of shortening and so that they come together and they're even smaller in between those pieces of flour. And so it gets kind of coarse, coarse, crumbly. And because we don't need the flour to be completely smushed in because that'll lead for a really heavy, heavy, dense dough. And we want a light flaky dough for these little pies. And so you just kind of take and you both like playing in a sandbox is what it is. You kind of are just playing in a sandbox with your sand, breaking up those pieces of shortening and, and mixing it in with the flour until it kind of gets just like this. All right, I'm gonna show you. You can see that there's little and big pieces here, flaky pieces of pie dough. And so now we're gonna take and we're gonna add just enough cold water so that I can push it together into a ball so that I can chill it so I can roll it out and turn it into these hand pies. So I'm gonna take by really just starting to add, drizzling maybe two tablespoons of, three tablespoons of ice water in there. And then I'm gonna take and I'm gonna start to pile it toward the center gently gently and it's still pretty crumbly on the edges so i'm going to take and i'm going to add and sprinkle another two tablespoons of water over the top so now i'm at five tablespoons of water and i'm going to take and i'm going to just start to press it into a ball shape in here and i think that's all i need i do not want to add any extra water because i do not want it to get too smushy and too wet because I want it to be nice and flaky when I'm finished. And so I've got a ball of dough right here. And press that extra in there if you can. Okay. So, ball of dough. It makes the ball, it's dough, it's pie dough. That's all you gotta do. All right, so now I'm gonna take and I'm gonna move this big bowl out of the way and I'm gonna show you how to turn this into a hand pie. Now, in your recipe here, we're following around and we're making the recipe, and it's telling us that we need to make the dough till it forms together, and then it says that we're supposed to put it on a floured surface, which we've done. 
Now, then as you're rolling this out, so there's a lot of things that when you're baking, you kind of have to read between the lines. It's warm out today here in Minnesota in September, which is so good. But if I was at home making this dough, I would put this in the refrigerator and chill it a little bit before I showed you how to roll it out. If it feels like it's room temperature or warm to the touch, chill it for like 15 minutes before you put it in there. For the sake of this video, I'm gonna jump through that step just to kind of show you what it looks like so you can kind of get an idea of how these hand pies work. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this disc, which I magically took out of a refrigerator somewhere, and I'm gonna put this on this flowered surface. And then I'm gonna just take, and I'm gonna to start to just press it flat and pick it up every once in a while so that I can do this. And then um, I'm gonna also have Lynn, cause she's always here for me. She knows my fingers were a hot mess and you wanna make sure that your fingers are not full of pie crumbs like mine just were. I don't even know if that helped. I'm really full of pie crumbs you here. Are. It's okay, crummy. so put it in there. I'm pretty crummy, ha ha. <laughs> make sure you have somebody to make pie jokes with in your <laughs> kitchen. All right, so I've got it flattened out into the disc that way like that. I can pick it up and I can flip it over. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and I'm gonna gently start to roll it. Now this is the first mistake people I think make with uh, making pie dough is they wanna like be a bulldozer and push it all over the place. But really all you gotta do, pickies up, gentle, gentle rolling. And we're gonna roll it out to just under a half of an inch thickness. Here we go. And if it's starting to stick on your rolling pin, you want to add a little bit of flour with your flour shaker that magically appears exactly when you need it. Or you just have a little bowl of flour that you can shake with your fingertips too. And we're going to take and we're going to roll that out. And then I'm going to take a large glass, a cookie cutter, a pot lid. Really, depending on what size you want your hand pie to be, that's what size of round circle thing you want to cut it out with. Um, I'm going to use a four inch this is what I would call a tuna can size cutter, um, which you also can use if you have a clean tuna can. You just take the lid off the top and the bottom and instantly you have a cookie cutter. All right, and I'm gonna take and I'm just gonna press that and get this extra, extra dough out of my way here. And this is gonna be a little baby ham pie. And I'm gonna make sure that it's nice and floured on my surface here so that it doesn't stick. And then I'm gonna add in about to a four inch hand pie like this, you probably only need about two tablespoons of filling. And so- Our I've, filling is still really hot. I'm afraid it's gonna melt your pie dough. Oh my goodness. So I'm trying to chill it So fast. this is a good thing. This is a good thing. Lynn popped a little bit of the pie filling onto a plate into the freezer. If you're making these and you're like, okay, what's next, what's next? If you keep them in a bowl like this, all the heat stays compact in that little compact bowl. If you keep them in your pan, it stays hot because it's in a hot pan. If you make them spread out, they're gonna cool faster because they have more surface area. And that same thing true, like put them on a plate, put them in the refrigerator, cool them down faster, keep them nice and flat and let all that steam come off and then throw them right into the fridge or the freezer. And you don't want them frozen, but you do want them cool. And it doesn't take much time at all. And so I'm just gonna take and I'm gonna add just my regular tablespoon here and I'm gonna spoon in two of these tablespoons into my little piece of dough. Okay. So you can see here, I've kind of kept the filling on one side because then I'm gonna lift up the other side and drop it over. I'm not gonna smash it over. I'm gonna pick it up and drop it over. And then I'm just gonna use my fingers to gently press little divots and seal the outside edges. And in your recipe, it has you using an egg wash to brush on top before you bake them. And so that's just for me, it's either egg and water or egg and milk. And you just brush a little on top and that's gonna help you with the golden brown edge. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and I'm gonna make this my own and I'm gonna give it the signature Mary little, little crimpy crimp on the outside edges. And there we go. The other thing you can do is you can take a clean fork and you can take and press the outside edges. And then finally, very, very important, the apples have moisture in them, the pie dough has moisture in them. We have to let that escape somewhere while it's baking. So I'm gonna take and either you take a knife or a fork and you just wanna give it a few little steam holes on the top so that it doesn't force the filling out the edges. Because if you don't have steam go up, it's gonna come out and it's gonna open up your hand pie. And then we're gonna just take and place them on a parchment lined baking sheet in our preheated oven. And we're gonna bake that up and turn that into a hand pie too. All right, so we have made uh, um, lots of different things in this fall baking kit. 
cinnamon rolls, hand apple pies, um, and made that. And then we are gonna show you in another video how to do the cinnamon roll filling and fill that up. And so it's like a whole plethora of fun things that you guys can do and bake with your family, either all the recipes at once and have a super baking day, or you can break them up and do them individually. And so I'm gonna clean my fingers and then um, we're gonna come back and I'm gonna show you guys how to make those cinnamon rolls. All right, next video coming up.